Hi there, welcome to BI Consulting Pro. In our last video, we talked about Dataflow Gen 2. In Dataflow Gen 2, we learn how to automate the extract, transform, and load process. With the help of Dataflow Gen 2, you can load the data directly into your lake house or any destination that you would like to. Now, in this video, we are going to talk about how you can use Dataflow Gen 2 as an activity in a pipeline. With the help of pipeline, either you can simply copy the data or you can use your notebook to transform the data or you can also use Dataflow Gen 2. If you would like to know, please stay tuned with me till the end of this video and I'm going to let you know everything about pipelines. If you are over here for the very first time, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell icon so that you always stay updated with our latest videos and updates. Now, without any further ado, let's get started. Let's first have some theoretical knowledge about data pipelines in Microsoft Fabric or you can also call them pipeline. First of all, you get to know what is a data pipeline. A data lake house is a common analytical data store for your cloud scale analytic solutions. One of the core tasks of a data engineer is to implement and manage the ingestion of data from multiple operational data sources in the lake house. In our last video, we saw that how you can use data flows gen 2 to get data from a source in in our video we just use the csv file but you can combine the data from the multiple sources over there in microsoft fabric you can implement this using data flows gen 2 extract transform and load the data you can also use the notebooks if you would like to for data ingestion through creating the pipelines now in fabric we know that fabric also supports a purchase path enabling you to write and run code to process the data at scale by combining the pipeline and Spark capabilities in Fabric, you can implement complex data ingestion logics that copies data from external sources into the one lake storage on which the lake house is based. And then you can also use the Spark code to perform custom data transformation before loading it into the different tables. Now you can see on screen that how you are going to get the data from a source, then you can ingest the data using a pipeline. You can also meanwhile transform the data using Dataflows Gen 2 and that also you can orchestrate using a pipeline and finally you can store the data into your lake house. So that's the overall architecture over here. Now on your screen, you can see one of the pipeline, what it's doing. It's first deleting the data, then it's using a data flow one and then using a notebook. So that is a typical data pipeline, but you will get a lot of options over there. I'm going to show you during the demo. There are some of the core concepts about the data pipelines or pipelines simply. One of them is activity. So whenever you are performing any task over there, it's known as an activity. For example, if you're gonna use copy activity, then it's a copy activity over there. Then it's an activity over there. You can also use the data flows gen 2 over there, then also it's an activity. You can use the notebooks, that's also an activity. You can also use data through some of the files, that is also an activity over there. Now, if you call about the parameters, you can also control the behavior of a pipeline using the parameters. All the pipelines can be parameterized, which is allowing specific values for each one. Parameters are also going to help you to enhance reusability by providing a flexible in specifying the values. This is going to help you to make your data ingestion and transform process more versatile. Now, copy data activity is one of the activity that you can simply perform. This is just going to copy the data from source to the destination. There you are not going to do any kind of transformations. However, if you would like to make any transformation, then I strongly use either use notebooks or if you are not really good with the coding, then you can simply use Dataflow Gen 2 where you can use a user interface just to transform any kind of data. If you are familiar with the Power Query, you are going to get the same interface over there. Now, question comes when to use the copy data activity. As I mentioned that whenever you don't need to transform any data, you just need to simply copy and load the data into the destination, you are gonna use your copy data activity. Pipeline runs are gonna help you to execute all those different activities that you are gonna embedded or use inside a pipeline. These can be your on-demand or schedule run and a unique ID is associated with that so you, that you can see that whether your pipeline has been run or not or if you want to check the status as well. Now we are going to move into the demo part where we are going to use the same workspace that we created in our last video and there we are going to create one pipeline. Right now I'm over here in my Dataflows Gen 2 workspace. Make sure that this is on fabric capacity or the premium capacity otherwise you won't be able to use it. If you would like to create any fabric items you have to enable Microsoft Fabric inside your organization otherwise you cannot use it. 
Now I'm going to go to the more options. Over here you will find a lot of options are available, right? You can see the Power BI options, you can see real-time analytics, data warehouse options, etc. Everything is over there. And here under data factory you would get this data pipeline option. Yesterday we used the data flows gen 2 and now we are going to use the data pipeline option. So click over here. It would take a couple of seconds and you can give it any name. I'm going to name it demo pipeline. Simply you can click on this create button. Now, once you do that, you would find this interface over there where you are going to get to know, okay, you want to add pipeline activity, you want to copy the data, or you want to choose a task at start. Over here, these are the three different options you are going to get to know. So you can directly add any activity over here. So if you are going to click over here, it's going to ask you what kind of activity you would like to add over here. All these are the different activities that you are going to find, and these are going to grouped into different parts. For example, if you want to move and transform data, then you would find your data flow over here. You can also find copy data or delete data. If you want to get and validate the data, then you can get the metadata and you can do the validation. Similarly, you would get control flow and other different activities. If you already have worked on Microsoft Azure and on Data Factory inside the Microsoft Azure, then you are already familiar with these different kind of activities over here. So we would like to use the data flow activities over here. So we can simply click it on this. If you would like to add any information, you can do that over here. Then there are the settings. So here you have to select your workspace and then data flows. In the workspace, we have already created this data flows gen2 underscore demo in our previous video. So we are gonna use it. If you would like to refresh it, you can do that, which is gonna help you to get to know all the other data flows that you have created recently over here. That's all we need to do. Once you do that, you would also get these advanced settings. So if you want to change any of those, you can do that, but we are not going to do any of these. Once you do that, then it's done. If you would like to add any more activities, anything you can do over here. For example, after this transformation of the data, you want to copy that, you can add it to the canvas as well. And then you can just connect with these. But I'm not going to use that. So that's why I'm going to delete it from here. And we are just going to focus on this one particular activity inside a pipeline. There can be multiple activities as I have shown you in, during the presentation. There you can add, add, add or delete data, copy data, transform data, anything. You can add notebook as well, lookup, invoke pipeline. A lot of different options are over there. But we are going to just focus on a very simple process. But please do remember that in your exam there can be a question on what are the different activities available inside a data pipeline or a pipeline in Microsoft Fabric. Why do you add the data flows gen2 or notebook or why and when to use the copy activity? So please pay attention on these. Now I'm going to simply run this activity. So it's going to ask you, okay, you want to save and run. I'm going to say yes. Now you can also see the status of this one. So you can come under output and here you will see that your pipeline is being loaded and it's in progress. You can come over here. If you have any variable, etc., you will find it over here, but we don't have. And you can see that it's in process right now. It's going to refresh, auto refresh it automatically. It's running. And if you would like to see the input, you can click it over here. This is your input. If you would like to check the output, you can click it over here. So these can also be a part of your question whenever you are working over here. One of the option is there. You can also export it to CSV file. So if you would like to export the current page data, you can do that or export top 1000 there. So please go through these each and every option. This is going to help you to work with pipelines. Now I'm going to iterate it again. Pipeline is just a way where you can orchestrate the different activities and you can execute it. So in order to make your ETL process completely automated, what you need to do, first of all, you know, you should know that what are your different data sources. Once you know about your data sources, then you have to combine the data from them and then you have to transform it. So extract part and then transform part, you can do with the help of data flows gen two. You can also load the data as well over there definitely, but rather than directly loading the data into your warehouse, what you have to do, you have to simply use a pipeline and in the pipeline, use the data flow gen2 as an activity. Now you can see that the activity status has been failed. So let's try to debug what is the reason. It's saying that data flow refresh transaction failed with status 22. So you can further debug it, that why it has been failed. So we are going to go back and we are trying to refresh our data flows and we'll see that whether it's being refreshed or not. So I'm going to come here and I am trying to refresh it. You can see that it has been stopped. There was a problem refreshing your data flow. So let's see what happens over here. 
If it can refresh, then we are going to go back again in our this demo pipeline and we are going to get to know. In your interviewer, there can also be a question that what are the two different elements being created or artifacts being created whenever you are working with a lake house. So you can see that this is your lake house and over here by default one cementing model is being created and one is your SQL analytics endpoint. This can be the question. So please, again, I'm saying that please be aware about that what you are creating here and how you are doing there. If you would like to grant the access to anyone over there, then you can simply come here and you can go to the manage permissions and you can grant the access to specific person as well. But we are not going to go there. I'm just telling you that how you can do that. And you can see that again, it's being failed. I'm not sure why it's getting failed. So we have to go inside that. And we'll see how, why it's getting failed. Let me close this one. Okay, this was my data set. So let me try to refresh it over here. And I think it's successfully done. Let me publish it. It's done. Now it's refreshing. Hopefully it should be done now. As you can see that on your screen, it has been successfully refreshed. And now we can go into the demo pipeline and we can see that sometimes it can happen. So that's the issue with data flows always. Sometimes it gets refreshed, sometimes it doesn't, but we need to find out the, exactly what is the reason over there. Now, what I'm gonna do, once it gets refreshed, I'm gonna go back into my demo pipeline and there we are gonna run it once more. And we'll see that whether this time we can do it or not. So again, here it's showing the problem. Probably that's the problem with the data flow. That's why we are encountering this one. But let's try to run it again. It's saying successfully running demo underscore pipeline and hopefully it can run. But I cannot take the guys. It happens sometimes. So you have to make sure that your data flows is running perfectly fine. But are, these are the different kinds of activities that I wanted to show you over here. If you would like to schedule this one at a particular schedule, you can do that as well. Right now it's off, but you can say on, then you can select, okay, you want to do that by minute, hourly, daily, etc. You can select your time as well. Let's say I selected this one, then you can say what is going to be your start date, what's going to be your end date, if you would like to, then what is your time zone, and then you can simply apply this over here. So that's going to create your schedule and it's going to help you to run automatically at this particular interval of time. If you don't want, then come back again, over here again and just stop this. That's all you have to do. If you want to do some endorsement as well, you can do that, whether you want it to promote it or certified. Certified means it's perfect, it's running fine, and you have analyzed it so guys the same error is uh, uh, happening it over here again so you can see that my error message would be the same that my data flow cannot be refreshed but in your case please do try it and if you are facing the same issue please do let me know in the comment section also if you want to invoke any other pipeline with the help of this pipeline you can do that you have to come here again go inside this pipeline and then you can connect another pipeline with this one and it's going to help you to invoke the pipeline so try out these different options over there and let me know what do you think about it. Do Are you going to face any challenge or problem or not? And can you do that successfully or not? But please do try it. DP600 exam is not an easy exam. And in this video, I have talked about everything about the data pipelines or pipelines, how you can create it, what is it, and where you can use it, and how to use them on Microsoft Fabric Platform. I hope now you have sound understanding about pipelines and how you can use Dataflows Gen 2 as an activity inside a pipeline. If you have any question and concern, please don't forget to let us know in the comment section. Also, if you're looking for any consulting services, any career guidance, or any training related to Microsoft Power BI or Microsoft Fabric, please contact us now. Till then, keep learning, and I'm going to see you in the next video.